there is a glare in the back and we're just going to say it's the holy spirit this morning the sun is out <laughs> and i don't have curtains but yeah i don't have anything in this apartment really <laughs> but god told me not to but that's a whole other story we'll talk about that another time so anyway um listen I want to talk about why did I get married. So it's not necessarily just about me. It is, but it's for other people. So for those who don't know, I just released one of many of my coaching programs, uh, which is a divorce aftercare coach. Uh, I had to change a little bit of the wording because I was getting some questions like, are you coaching people to get divorced? And the answer is absolutely not. I love uh, marriage i love it i loved being married we were just married to i wasn't married to the right person but i enjoyed my experience and i learned a lot so not his fault not my fault well it was both our faults so i'm not putting any blame on him it was both our faults we didn't know what marriage was so i want to talk a little bit about why did i get married and so if you know me you know that um i only speak from experience i don't speak from anything i heard uh or thought is my experience so i'm gonna give you a brief rundown about me getting married so i met my ex-husband when i was 19. uh we missed a round for an extended period of time so it was like a friends with benefits situation all right and um we ended up you know i guess once you start dealing with somebody for an extended period of time it's like well i've been dealing with this person for a long time let me just stay with them you know what i'm saying and really to be honest like i had a couple of boyfriends and relationships but it really wasn't anything long enough to compare stuff to and so for the environment that i was in or what i grew up in like i grew up middle class but for the most part from where i'm from it was more like get a dude that has some money and typically those were drug dealers so then I was used to my daddy taking care of me. Uh, I also worked, you know, I was one of the, I had a balance, but I was used to my daddy taking care of me. So naturally I'm going to get somebody that has some money, right? Uh, and so I got that. And when I married him, you know, I didn't really know what marriage was. Like, I know I saw it from my parents, um, but nobody really sat down and talked to me about it. Uh, how dating looks um, It was just like I was left to my own device like my mom would give me some You know things here and there and my dad would give me some things here and there But really like to know about dating to know about love to know about emotions Nobody talked to me about that. I was learning from my friends. I was learning from sex up from porn like nobody had these conversations with me and so um i was left to my own devices and that is one of the main reasons i started dating is dead who killed it because even at this age i'm 44 even at this age nobody we still don't know like we still left to figure it out and we don't know how to have those healthy uh, conversations but going back to marriage um married uh my ex-husband, I should have known not to marry him. There were red flags everywhere. Uh, but what I saw growing up, and I actually had this conversation this morning with my cousin, I saw the stick to of staying in a marriage uh, that wasn't necessarily healthy. Like, I saw that. And so I knew, like, there had to be, like, a balance of, okay, we know marriage is something that you stick out. But then we also, like what do you stay and stick around for right so i didn't have that balance like i knew i wasn't going for this but then i knew if we stay together like we need to go you know everything is not going to be perfect but i never knew that balance so for years the goal was to be married because naturally like i love marriage and i wanted to be married i always knew i was a wife i feel like i'm wife material i was wife material back then i'm really that now <laughs> not perfect but still wife material material and i'm coachable right and so and i was willing to learn but the thing about it is when i saw all these red flags my mindset was let me graduate from college and move to charlotte but that did not happen uh i graduated and my ex-husband was still cheating he cheated through the whole relationship right and I finally was like, look, when I went back to college, and I think it was 2003, I was like, look, we need a break. Like, you can't leave this girl alone. I got to get my life on track. 
call me when you're ready, right? And so it took about a month. We didn't talk. And then he came back and said, it's over with. Like, I'm done. It's me and you. Of course, naturally, we got back together. It still was not over. He still was cheating with her, uh, flew her in for um, uh, during our wedding weekend. Uh, and the other girlfriend was at the actual wedding, right? <laughs> So I knew, like, I knew this stuff before, like, the day before we got married. And it was like, I could have called it off, but I didn't. Because it would have looked bad. We spent too much money. Like, my mom spent, the, I emptied my savings. My mom, she spent a lot of money. My dad spent a lot of money. Like, we had a big wedding. It was over 200 people. He had, like, 13 people. I had, like, 10 on my side. Like, it was a huge wedding. And so, we spent a lot of money because it looked good. And, you know, that's why I, I get upset when I see couples or people that pretend to wear things well. Like, oh, everything is great, which I know sometimes you got to put on a good face. And you know, can't let the enemy see you sweat and all this good stuff. But at least talk about some of the things that are going on to help the next, you know, the people coming up behind you, right? Uh, and so I saw all these red flags. I knew about this stuff the day before I got married. I knew way before. And I thought because we got married, it would change. And it absolutely did not. Matter of fact, it got worse. Um, and the sad thing about it is when I look back on it in retrospect, you know, sometimes we get into marriages and we want people to change, and we should not want that. Like, I should want for him to be happy being his complete self, right? He liked to smoke. I didn't smoke or drink. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't a big drinker, but, you know, he would socially drink. But he used to like to smoke. And I'm like, no, nah, I don't smoke in the house. So he had to go elsewhere to go and smoke. So when he was messing around, guess who he was drawn to? Women who smoke, right? Uh, so he naturally, he was not able to be himself in the house because I wanted him to change. And I'm sure there's a lot of things about me that he wanted to change. You know what I'm saying? He used to call me church lady. You go to church all the time. You, you know, you're trying to be Miss Perfect and all of this stuff, right? So naturally, there were things about me that he wanted to change, but you have got to understand, we all have flaws, number one. But when we get with somebody, uh, we have to know what we can accept and what we can't before that happens, right? Is this something that I can live with for the rest of my life if it does not change? I did not think about any of those things. I didn't think about our sex life when we got together. All I knew was it was good because he was humping on me. But did I enjoy myself? Did I te you know, teach him how to touch me? Did I teach him how to do certain things? Or did he show me what to do? Or is he just trying to get off? Like it was a whole bunch of things. Do you want affection? Like now I feel like I need affection because I'm not affectionate. Uh, now I feel like I need uh, certain types of attention because I've dealt with somebody who has given me that. So now I long for that. You know what I'm saying? So, but the, the aspect of it is even when you're married or before you're married, you, you should be growing. You should be growing as a person, growing uh, in your thoughts and, and things you like and dislike. You're going to be forever changing. So when you get married, those that change should not and does not stop. It doesn't stop. So you're going to have to naturally find somebody who can grow with you, right? Uh, grow into still supporting you and, and learning and figuring those things out because, it, you know, it's ever changing, right? Um, and you should have a friend in the marriage. I had the friend in the marriage, but we didn't grow together. We didn't grow together. And so I, one of the things I knew that I didn't ever talk about was, yay, I'm married but I'm not happy. Yay, I'm married, but we can't ob obtain the things that I want to obtain because you're still out here in the street. And yes, I have a pretty good job, but I can't get the things that I really want. We can't really have the big house for real. You know, we have to rent. Uh, we can't have like the real cars for real because we have to do, you know, purchasing. And then I didn't have like the credit. Like I didn't, it was, it was just a bunch of things that we just did not have and I noticed early on and then on top of the cheating, I was just like, this is not the life I want to live. But because he was in the street, I knew I felt like I couldn't leave because I'm not financially stable to do so. And I didn't have any discipline. I didn't have any discipline. And so um, with that being said, I was I stayed a lot longer than I wanted to needed to or shouldn't have ever been in. Right. Uh, and what I know now is. It's better to be single than to marry wrong. And then I know also looking back in retrospect that I got married because I felt like 
well, I'm getting older. You know, I was, I think I was 27 when I got married, 27, 28. Like I felt like I was not going to get anybody. I'm getting older. It's about time to have kids. Like the time is ticking. The time is winding down. I need to hurry up and be with somebody. And, oh, well, he's here. He's been here. So might as well. I ain't been dealing with nobody else. So might as well. And a lot of women that I talk to now say the same thing. I didn't think I was going to get anybody else. So he was here, so might as well. Or I have a daughter. He is nice to her. He takes care of her. Might as well. Meanwhile, while we're in this thing and we're married, yay, but we're miserable. Right? And so then you spend out all these years stagnant, not walking in what God told you to walk in. Because what we know is God has given us this ability and downloaded this ability and these gifts for us to walk in and also minister to other people. And so what I believe marriage is, is a ministry. You know, I don't want to be like the next time I get married, I don't want to be married just to somebody just because we saying we're married. I'm married because it's a ministry. You know, I'm married because, you know, he should have something that God has already put in him that he's walking in. I have something that I'm actively walking in. But when we come together, we can walk into those things together. We can build the kingdom together. We can build the neighborhoods together. You know, I have a heart for people in ministry to help, you know, homeless people and, and house homeless people. I also have a, a, a thing for wanting to um, help people that have been in prison once they get out. You know, there's a lot of things that I that consider ministry that's in the church but not necessarily in the church and so i want to walk alongside of my husband to help with those things because i have a heart for it i have a heart for relationships i have a heart for marriage i have a heart for people living their best life from their in, from the inside out but if i'm with the wrong spouse guess what i how can two walk together unless they agree that's the scripture right and so if i don't have the support of my husband then what are we doing you know I was very uncomfortable even becoming a divorce coach. I'm going to tell you why. I was talking to my homegirls, and they were like, Reagan, you really need to do this because it's a lot of women who are going through. Like, I have friends. I know people who have actively gone through a divorce or need to go through a divorce, and they don't know where to start, and you have been through all of that, right? And you have come out on the other side of that, right? I have. But what I find very hard is, and the position that I sit, is that, Lord, you keep sending me all of these powerhouse women. Like you're sending me these powerhouse women, these leaders that got money, that got ideas, that are visionaries, that have big ministries on the inside of them. And they are married to some husbands who are not going to, they can't hold them. They can't hold them. They can't hold them. Right? And so I'm like, Lord, and it's, it's almost, it's very scary because I'm like, Lord, I don't want to tell them nothing, but in my spirit, I know they're not supposed to be together, but you'll never hear me say, go get a divorce. But God has already talked to them, right? And then my mom was telling me, Reagan, you really need to do a deep dive study on what divorce is because God can't just hold us to this one thing he cheated or she cheated and that's it. I remember my father-in-law, when I decided to get a divorce, we had a conversation. Let me check on the time. I got to get out of here. Um, we had a conversation, and he gave me some scripture, and I, and I have to go back and try to find it. But he was like, if there's no peace in the house, like there's more than just the cheating part, right? And I don't want to be in a marriage where I'm stagnant. I don't. Like I literally, the things that I want to do, I know when I have the right person, like it'll flourish, my ministry for incarcerated people when they get out of prison is very big because they don't have an advocate when they get out of prison. I saw it with my ex-husband. If I did not advocate for him, he would have been gone a long time ago because it is set up from the prison system for you to either go back or they just they don't care about you. Like It's almost like they're waiting for you to mess up right they don't care about your health they don't care about you once you leave the place there's no rehabilitation at all i saw it firsthand so i have a heart to help incarcerated people once they are released from prison right i have a heart for that because i saw how hard it was i have a heart for people to walk into their purpose but let me tell you something sometimes god will not bless you with everything until you detach from the wrong people and this is including your spouse because you never should have gotten married in the first place <laughs> And what I saw was once 
you know, my ex-husband left, I was able to grow and have conversations and, 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 and grow into who he would have me to be. And so when I came back and I said, okay, babe, when we're trying to work it out, I was like, well, what do you want to do? And his conversation was like, we're going to basically file back where we came from. And I was like, yeah, no, I don't want that. I don't want that. But at the same time, I want him to be happy. You know, I want him to live his best life. But he in turn went back to somebody who he was dealing with years prior who stole money and stuff from him. Like, it was crazy. And I asked him, I said, why did you go back to her? Like, why her? He said, I know her. And I'm not going to be out here by myself. Might as well. Because when he died, she took all the money that he had, right? So you have to be careful who you are attached to. Like my attachments now, I'm like, I move really strategically in who's attached to me. But I, I, I said all that to say, when you are considering getting married, please look at the whole picture. Look at your, first your ministry. What do you, what is your assignment when you get together? Like, what are you guys assigned to? What What is your spouse assigned to? What are you assigned to, right? Look at those things. What are you supposed to be doing in the earth to help people? That's your number one assignment. What, what, are, what are you the answer to, right? Um, also, what is your assignment by yourself? Because you're still supposed to fulfill those things, right? Uh, the friendship, the happiness, do they, do they listen? Do they have the room to grow to be able so you can grow together? Do you have those things? Are you sexually compatible? If you're not, are they willing to learn? Are you willing to learn, right? Uh, and so, you know, I didn't learn all of these things. Even in my mistakes when I was dealing, you know, with a certain person, it was a mistake that I dealt with them, but it really wasn't. And when God said all things work together for my good, you know, me encountering this particular person, even though I shouldn't have, I learned a whole, whole lot. And I learned that, you know, somebody can be attracted to me and want me that is not the same caliber of where I came from. Like, they got a lot going for themselves, you know. And at first, I never thought I could get that. And God was showing me, oh, yes, you can. Because once you change and start doing these things, you attract who you are, right? You, you're going to attract the, the, dump, the numb nuts, too. But you're going to start attracting who you are once you start walking in your calling. And so I just implore you today, you know, uh, again, I don't say go get a divorce. I'm just asking you, why did you get married? Are you happy? Are you walking in your calling? Is your marriage stagnant? Your marriage is going to be stagnant every now and again. Like you're going to have, I'm not saying leave and, it, you know, you having problems and bumps in the road. That, that's marriage. But are you still in like active years and years and years and years and years of bumps in the road? They're not listening. They're not attentive to your needs. You're not having sex. Let me tell you something. I have women in my inbox. That's why I said I got to be a divorce coach that have not had sex with their husband in three to four years. That's crazy. That's crazy. They either are not having sex with their husband or they're out cheating. And y'all telling me I don't need to do what? Be a divorce coach. <laughs> yeah, right. That's crazy. Because when I get married, I, listen, I, I'm expecting to get something busted open. I, I just am. Because that's a part of intimacy. That's how you guys grow together and learn together and love together. That makes that intimate moment, Right. So you mean to tell me you just marry because it looks good? I don't listen to me. I'm going to say this and get out of your way. I don't want to be in a relationship that just looks good. I want it to be good. I don't want to say, oh, yeah, because we've been together for 30 years and. Oh, I've been, that's like having a friendship. Oh, we've been friends for 30 years, but is it producing anything? What are you producing? And your marriage should be producing something. And I'm not saying we... Uh, I should be out here in business and because everybody has a different assignment. But what does your marriage produce? Right. It should produce something outside of children. Right. Outside of love. It should be outside of you. So anyway, I got to go. Um, just wanted to give you guys a little piece of my heart this morning. Um, I'm very excited about the new direction of my coaching. Uh, the divorce coaching is um, a, something a little bit newer for me. And I was running from it. But it is absolutely needed. I am getting messages every day. I'm getting prayer requests every day. Reagan, what do I do with my marriage? And you will never hear me say, you know, get a divorce because I'm not going to say that. I'm going to say, what did God tell you? Or I'm going to say, let's pray about it and his will be done. But you do, you are an active participant. Faith without works is dead. So you do have um, 
a uh, a dog in the fight. You have you you can talk, you can do your part. But uh, but what I will say is, I've been in a situation where I didn't leave because of money situations. Once he was forced to leave, I had no choice but to figure it out. But at the end of the day, it made me a better person. It showed me what I was made of, right? Uh, and I learned a lot. And so I learned what I can take into the next marriage and what not to take in the next marriage. Uh, and essentially, I just, I want to be happy. And you're not going to always be happy in the marriage. And let me just say that too. Like, it's going to be days you're going to get on his nerves and vice versa. But I wanted to produce something really, really great. And I want a partner that we can learn and grow together, right? Uh, and so I want that naturally for everybody because, you know, the person that God has for you has to be able to hold you. And when I say hold, I don't necessarily mean physically. I mean be able to cultivate your gift and support your gift and help your gift flourish and vice versa for them, whatever that looks like. Uh, and that's what I want and that's what I believe that is needed in the kingdom marriage. And so... Ladies, if you are having an issue, uh, if you're divorced, you're stuck, you don't know what after divorce looks like. I'm also getting people, the women I'm actually getting are still married, which is like I told my homegirl, it's a really tough spot for me to be in, uh, you know, because I am divorced. And it's like, Lord, why you keep sending me these married women? He was like, because <laughs> like you've been through it and I am talking uh, I've been talking to them and they need to see it in action. And so I'm like, okay, Lord, your will be done. But it, I'm going to be honest, it's a tough spot. And I know a lot. Well, matter of fact, all the women that God has sent me, you know, they're not supposed to be in those marriages. Matter of fact, God told them not to and they weren't supposed to in the very beginning. Uh, but... You know, I'm never going to just say, hey, go get a divorce. And I remember, this is the last thing I'm going for real. I remember having a conversation with my pastor uh, right before because I was having a very hard time with divorce. Because, you know, once you get saved and it's like, you can't go unless he cheated. Well, I got grounds if we're talking about that. But it was, you know, other things. And I said, you know, pastor, I don't know what to do, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, he just looked at me. He was like, so what is your foundation? And I was like, we don't have one. And he looked at me like, okay, and just walked off. So I had my answer. So what is your foundation of your marriage? Do you agree? Do you two of you walk together so you can agree? Do you agree on this is our stable foundation, right? If you don't, it's built on sin. So anyway, um, God bless to the people who are married. God bless the ones who are divorced. Ladies, uh, I do not work with men pertaining to this divorce. Uh, the divorce stuff and I don't coach men I've had issue with coaching men and we'll touch that another time as I got out of the church but anyway you guys have a blessed day this is your girl Reagan Adams with all things Reagan and Reagan says I think it I see it I do it you guys have a good one bye